This is Sad Boy Radio. All right, everybody, welcome back to Sad Boy Radio. Today, I got a new guest. He's not special. He's a new guest. <laughs> uh, it's going to be my boy, Christian. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. What's going on, everyone? I'm Christian. A um, little bit about me. I'm from St. Louis. I literally just moved here uh, like three days ago to Joliet. Um, other than that, I just graduated from SIUC with criminal justice background. And so um, if you guys want to hit me up with a follow on Instagram, you know, Christian underscore L22. Um, shoot me some, you know, ideas of places I can go to, you know, around Chicago, the city. It doesn't matter how far, you know, because I've just been exploring. Other than that, you know, I'm new to area, so. He just said slide into his DM. Nah, so wh- whoever's like watching, that, the, <laughs> whoever's watching this, just slide into his DMs already, bro. Today, I don't know, man. This one's kind of old, this outline, but, you know, I want to talk about missed opportunities. I definitely feel like we both relate to this. Man, so just a little background, like, me and this dude, we met one time, like, I don't know, a year and a half ago. And now, like, we were on the phone, like, every day before we moved here. So, like, we definitely got, like, a good understanding of, like, what each other's, like, ideas are and thoughts are. So... You know, you might see him a little bit more. He's going to be sad boy number two, Toxic King. But, yeah, so today we're going to talk about missed opportunities, bro. Um, Life just really passes you by so quick. Uh, Man, this year has really demonstrated that for me. Uh, So many different things going on. And I don't feel like I want to regret anything at the end of the day. You know, a lot of people say I'd rather have an oh well than a what if. And I've fallen into that category a lot of times where I'm like, damn, I wish I would have done this or what if I would have done that? And I think that I still kind of live with that every day sometimes where I'm like, damn, I really fucked up here. But, oh, well, it'd be like that, right? Um, That can do with anything, right? Jobs, relationships, even um, missed events, right? A lot of people will say, oh, you can go ahead and... um, you can repeat a class, but you can't repeat a party. Exactly. <laughs> That's, like, the dumbest shit ever because you're going to be, like, in school forever. But, you know, whatever. Like, bro, you can always repeat a party. And at least once you're 21, you know, you're in the club every weekend. Not you, though. Nah, not really. Um, honestly, I can relate to that a lot because, like, during school, you know, I would take it a little easy. You know, my grades weren't bad or anything, but I could have done better. And so just my whole last, you know, junior and senior year, I really focused on myself, you know, not partying as much, not, you know, paying attention to, like, the little things. And, you know, I ended up getting, like, straight A's my whole last year and stuff. And that was just a little confidence booster. Kind of like, I felt like, me personally, I think about the little stuff. And so I always think, like, back to, like, damn, if I had done this my whole college career you know I would have felt much better about myself I feel like that's kind of like a missed opportunity I feel like I finished strong and that's kind of like an example of how it goes really you learn from your mistakes in a sense that's right Uh, it definitely is like a missed opportunity to I guess let time pass you by and just kind of go with the flow sometimes right because there's definitely opportunities that you could take advantage of like I said job opportunities are always popping up but you know you're content with what you got you keep on going and sometimes it leads to better things sometimes it doesn't Uh, specifically what I think about is like missed opportunities would be relationships you know a song by Sierra right I bet miss someone she talks about missing someone it's probably future (laughs) you don't realize what you have right uh it actually was about future i bet she's talking about how future kept on cheating on her and she you know he didn't realize what she had what he had i just saw a meme the other day they're like damn who hurt future bro this man used to only talk about love and now (laughs) all he talks about is uh being toxic what do you say if if she sees me cheat i will never tell her sorry Oh, yeah. Nah, there's so many, like, memes about him nowadays. Like, he's just on that wave of just toxic stuff. And, I mean, that's really how it goes, man. You get hurt so much or, you know, some stuff happens in your life, you know, you kind of change as a person, you know? Yeah. You got an example, bro? Not very specific example. I'd say, like, growing up, I was a very quiet kid, so I didn't really talk to as much people, you know, but I consider myself, like, probably the most friendliest person you'll meet, you know? I get along with everyone now, but back then, you know, I didn't really take those opportunities to, you know, express myself, put myself out there and meet more people. And so I feel like that's kind of regret that I was so self-conscious about myself, my looks back in the day, and just 
that kind of put me in a closed shell kind of. But other than that, really, that's only the... I mean, I'm great now. Like, I love how I am now and, and that I'm very open and free talking to anyone, you know, relationship-wise or just making friends, you know. Um, but back then, that's probably, like, one of my biggest just regrets was just not doing that early enough, you know, because yeah. I felt like I could have met more people. And so, like, making relationships and building stronger connections in a exactly. sense. Yeah, I mean, when you're young, you're always you're always going to miss something, basically, you know. I think when I was younger, I probably, I didn't get along with people. So, oh, yeah, no, I didn't get along with people. I thought that, um, I definitely thought a lot of people were more immature than me. Like, I don't know, I guess people would joke about shit, and I'd be like, that's, like, that shit's not even funny, bro. Yeah. I don't know, it's uh, shit like when you're 8, 9, 10 years old, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it'd be like that. I feel that, though, like, sometimes, like, a example for me is, like, some people will say, you know, some jokes that just don't make no sense to me sometimes or they're just kind of outdated. And, but for me, you know, I feel like I'm sometimes overly nice to where, you know, I give, like, a fake laugh or, like, try to, you know, do a conversation about it. But at the end of the day, like, I just – I say to myself, like, sometimes I just hate people because uh, it's just hard sometimes to constantly talk to people sometimes that – throw those lame jokes or like it's kind of weird to connect to everyone yeah i mean it's just energy draining when you're trying to relate to people that you don't relate to exactly you know you got to surround yourself with the right people i've talked about it before where you are the company you keep right if you're around a bunch of drinkers you're going to drink a lot if you're around a bunch of smokers you're going to smoke a lot and if you're around a lot of people who are just bringing down your energy you know they're depressed every day or they're feeling some type of way about a situation you know they're going to talk to you about it, and it's going to be like, damn, what the fuck? Like, you're going to be angry yourself. You know, you got to be around people who bring your energy up, who are making big moves in life, you know, not missing those opportunities. Because when you're around people who are just complacent with their life and people who are ready to just be mediocre, you know, you're just going to be mediocre. And I guess that's, like, that's part of why I separate myself a lot and just be by myself because it's kind of easier for me to focus on me and focus on what I got to do if I'm by myself. Whereas if you're moving in a pack, you know, you got to drag people along sometimes, you know, and that's never the best way to go. That's kind of like how I do. Uh, I've been on the th this like thing for like four summers now, man. I've just been, you know... When school hits, you know, and, and you're out having fun, partying, whatever you're doing, drinking, you kind of backtrack on a bunch of stuff you used to do for yourself personally to improve yourself. That could be from hygiene to working out constantly if you're, you know, into that stuff. And, like, so in the summer, you know, I find it a great opportunity to just kind of separate from that stuff. So what I do is usually I don't drink in the summer. Um, I don't pop out really. I work out almost every day, eat right, you know, save as much money as I can to where when summer ends, then I come back, you know, better than before and, you know, just with a better mindset. So I always find that a great opportunity to work on yourself, whether it be mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. So we got Big Sean up in here. Nah, I yeah. mean, that that's what's up, bro. And that, that really is important in you know, finding the right steps for you, finding where you want to be in life because you just got to take that time for yourself. Uh, I feel like I don't really get that. You yeah. know, I'm always on the move. I'm always doing something. And uh, what do they say? Pressure creates diamonds or uh -huh. some shit like that, right? Yeah. So, you know, keep applying that pressure to yourself. Keep applying pressure to what, you know, you want to achieve. And eventually, you know, it's not handed to you. You earned it. But, you know, it's going to work out in the end. Exactly. All right, bro. But going back to missed opportunities, right? I definitely think about that a lot. Uh, Big Sean, going back to Big Sean, <laughs> Mr. Big Sean over here. Uh, in a song, he talks about living sing in the song "Living Single." He talks about you know what it's like being single, and that song I always reference when I'm talking to anybody because that's honestly how it feels. You know, he says, "And she was the best girl, right place, wrong mind, get my mind right, hit her." Hit her back, and then it's like, and then wrong line, right? Yeah. And it, it's true because, right, when you think about it, when you have the wrong mindset, you're not bringing the right things around you, right? 
And when you have the wrong mindset, when you're with a girl who is right for you at the time, you fuck it up. You know, you're not going to you're not going to be able to focus on that. You're not going to be able to do what you would have had you at the right mindset. If you go in with the a different intention at most of the time, that intention never changes. Right. Because I don't know, I I kind of view it or I think most people view relationships as, you know, when you go into something uh that's what it's gonna stay at so if you're friends most likely you're gonna end up staying friends if you go into it hooking up most likely that's just gonna be a hookup unless somebody catches feelings but at that point you both have the understanding that yo this is just a hookup so usually one person catches feelings another person doesn't because that's how they view it and then when you go into it thinking okay this will turn into a relationship most of the time you're both on the right you know right expectation when you talk about it So I like to reference that Big Sean song as like, listen, this is how this is how most guys end up because they miss out on the right girl because they're just so focused on themselves. And when they finally do find themselves, you know, they hit her up and it's like a wrong number or new number. Who it is? (laughs) I I feel like everyone's, you know, had those kind of experiences um, to like the T like it's basically wrong place wrong time you know i i feel like you know everyone moves at a different pace in terms of just growing up or or just being right for a relationship some think they're ready but some you know can attest to that and say you know no you're not ready for a relationship and obviously if you cheat on the other person and stuff like that or you just you know communication wise you're not there yet obviously you need to work on yourself not ready for a relationship and so i feel like It sucks sometimes, you know, when you get that relationship and you know she's a good, you know, girl or he's a great guy, and but you're not on your shit to where, you know, you could cheat and stuff, and that really hurts a relationship and stuff. And then when, you know, you guys break over some some stupid stuff, you know, then you start thinking about those times and like, damn, you know, I wish I had been better, all this and that, you know. Like, you know, Big Sean or, like, Drake, you know, try to call the girl's phone back up. I feel like just that's a big opportunity, Miss, you know, to see yourself with that person. But I see it as a blessing, too, because, you know, you're not wasting that person's time. And uh, it's a part to where you understand what you need to work on and stuff. And so opportunity, a missed opportunity can turn into a better one in that sense, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like a blessing in disguise, like they say. But another, the end to that song is where it really hits home, bro, because he says, uh, the closest thing I had to that came in at 4 a.m. and left for 8 at work, and I'm the reason we ain't made it work. Oh, shit. So it's like, yeah, that's true, bro, (laughs) because when you got the wrong mindset, you're the reason why it's not making it work. And a lot of people can attest to it where it's like, yo, like, you got a good you got a good person by you. Make sure you keep them around. And eh, I think I can do better or eh, I think maybe I'm looking for something else when what you need is right in front of you sometimes. I don't know, man. I just feel like a lot of the time I do fall into that category where I'm just thinking like there's something else there there's something that's missing and I can't ever put a finger on it but sometimes like I said you know by the time you get your mind right it's like that opportunity's gone exactly I just um with that being said like that's why they say sometimes you know you don't get in a relationship when you're young um because it's fake love and I heard this I don't remember his name he was a rapper But he says fake love basically because during that time, you know, you're out, you're partying and stuff, you know, drinking, trying to vibe with everyone else. So when you get in that relationship, there's a lot of temptation going on and it makes it harder for a person who's at a young stage of their life, you know, college and stuff, for them to stay faithful or put that effort and time into someone. And so, like, for me personally, I feel like I'm at that part where, you know, for me, example, like if I get in a relationship, you get my 110%. You know, I'm being faithful, uh, communication wise, everything like to the T. But obviously, say me three years ago, four years ago, I couldn't say the same thing I'm saying right now because, you know, I still had a lot growing up. And so I just feel like those are opportunities, yeah, but at the end of the day, they just came at the wrong time. So 
And when you treat somebody like that, like you said three years ago, you wouldn't have like cared. It's like, you know, Bryson Tiller in the song Don't. He wrote that song based on the perspective of how he was treating his girl at the time and how another guy would have said, you know, don't play with her. Don't, what is it? Don't don't be dishonest. Yeah. Uh, not understanding this logic. Shit like that. He wrote it from the perspective of, okay, I'm not treating my girl right. Some other dude's probably out here saying this shit because... That's what dudes do. They always come in at the or at the moment that you guys are fighting. They're gonna be like, "Yo, what's up? You know, he he's not right for you. Uh, good, let me take you, know. you out." They always wait in the dark. You know, any female out there, I'm sorry, but I got you know say it to you straight. Any guy that says they're your friend, not really your friend. To like, he can be there. You can have some guy friends, obviously, but there's some guys out there. From a guy's perspective, they're just waiting, waiting until you know you, you break up or something to slide in. And at that time, you got broken heart, so you down for whatever and everything. So I'm just saying, in words of wisdom, it happens, man. And hey, man, go watch When Harry Met Sally. Have you watched that <laughs> shit? I don't know. I don't know that movie or show. Bro, you gotta watch that movie. Basically. The premise of the movie is Harry, which is played by Billy Crystal, he talks about, he tells Sally, who is played by Meg Ryan, that guys and girls can't be friends. And she's she doesn't believe it. She's like, why not? Because, you know, there's always that, like, sexual tension or th- there's always the sex, like, even if the girl doesn't want it, you know, the guy's just waiting for it. Yeah. Not to say, you know, that's the case every time, but it does make sense. Because that's how a lot of guys are, you know. A lot of guys are just waiting, and once they, you know, once they get their opportunity, you know, they're gonna take it. Go watch the movie. It's yeah. a good movie. Go watch the movie. I've never watched it. I'll watch it. Damn, bro. I just, I just looked down and I remember the song "Fooling Around." It's by Usher. <laughs> uh, so when Usher was married the first time to, I believe it was Tamika Foster. Was it? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, he his next album, Raymond vs. Raymond, I think it's when he got divorced, actually. He made two songs, one's called Papers and one's called Fooling Around. In Fooling Around, he starts by saying, let me start by saying that the way I felt for you was some shit. I'm not going to get the full thing. But he's basically talking about in Fooling Around that, you know, you deserve someone better that, you know, is going to be there for you, that's not going to be fooling around. And... Uh, making all these mistakes i just you know a lot of people make those mistakes and then even in his new song that he released right after he divorced with his second wife it's called bad habits and he says you know i love love i'm just fucking bad at it can't escape all of these bad habits and how you know you know you're sliding into the dms of your ex whenever things are looking good they're right there they're right there to fuck shit up so like there's there's always that time, bro, like where someone that you try to forget about just comes in at the wrong time, you know, when you're doing so like fucking good with someone else and just at that time it's like one little fight, you know, in your relationship could persuade you to hit them back up. And so it's it's really, you know, a hard thing to come across, but when it happens like it's it's definitely a test for sure. Yeah. Damn, sad boy, bro. Yeah, you know, I've come from experience and stuff, and I've handled it well. But uh, for people out there, you know, it's it's definitely just a test and an opportunity for you to show yourself you're better than that, and you deserve better. Yeah, bro, and in those moments, I feel that a lot of people just find themselves in a bad place. They find themselves in a dark place, right? And I've had times where I do overlook someone, where I overlook, you know, Someone that's right in front of me and I just can't focus on them because I got so many other things going on, right? When you find yourself in a dark place, just like you were saying, you know, one argument just throws everything out the door. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really like an anger thing, an anger or yeah, being being irate, man. Just it it blinds you. Anger blinds you. Mm -hmm. It does. And for me, like personally, like it's good, like to let your emotions out but not to the point where it changes you as a person you know and 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 you do things that you didn't think you would ever do and so during that time like if you're in a relationship don't fuck up you know if especially you were a good person like it's a great opportunity to see where you you know can go with this person there's always room for build up during those times you know exes texting you all that you know people around you don't fuck up i think that just as people 
we're always looking for something that's kind of better, right? Or we're looking for somebody that really is going to be down for us. In a song by August Alcina, Would You Know What To Do, he says, you know, if I gave my all to you, would you know what to do with it? And it's a, a really, like, hard-hitting song because throughout the song he's saying, you know, uh, are you really down for me? You know, if at the end of the day I came home and I just didn't want to do anything, you know, what could you be there for me? Yeah. And at that time, he was in a really dark place where I've talked about it, where he's like sleeping in a black room. Everything's black in his room. Like the depression really hit when I saw him in concert. He didn't perform one song off that album. He only performed the lead single and that was it. And I just feel like that album really does demonstrate, you know, all the emotions a person goes through. Uh, the album's called This Thing Called Life. So literally this thing called life, bro, you're going through all these emotions and you wonder, you know, are you really down for me? And that's that's when shit goes bad. When you get in your head, you know, you, you start to miss out on, you know, the really good things. I can, man, just talking about it, I've thought about so many different things where it's like, damn, I, you know, I didn't cherish that moment enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since you pulling out all these, you know, song examples, I got one of myself. I don't know if most people know him, Pink Sweat. You know, he has a song called uh, Honesty, I think. Honestly, Honesty. But he talks about basically him showing love to, you know, a female and him being scared that she won't reciprocate it back. And so that, I think, is a great example. Like, I listen to that song sometimes. He, You know, he can sing. You know, he got some vocals. But, like, I think it's a great example. Like, so many people out there scared to hit up your ex or, or for, you know, for telling them, like, hey, you know, I'm moving on better to better things. Or, like, they're scared to, you know, call their crush and be like, hey, let's go get some dinner and stuff like that. Like, yeah, at that moment, like, you're not sure if it'll lead anywhere. But you doing that is showing that, hey, you took the opportunity to reach out to try to advance on someone and, and see where it goes. And I think, you know, at this point, people are just scared of rejection. Rejection is a big thing. When you're older, don't be scared, you know. You're not going to get 100 yeses, but that one yes out of 100 can change your life, you know, forever, to be honest. So, My boy's spitting facts right now. That's right. Those, those really are the opportunities that you do have to take. And at the end of the day, if you don't take them, you can't dwell on it. Because if you do dwell on it, like, it's just going to eat at you every single day where you're like, damn, I really fucked up. I really should have, you know, tried to make this work or I should have tried at least to see what's up. I think that, you know, like I was saying, I do find myself in that position, but I also find myself in the position where I'm doing my own thing, you know. Exactly. So that's the most important thing. I think that you do have to let go in order to completely move on, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You know, like I said, you can't dwell on shit because that's really when, you know, you're not able to let go. But, of course, as humans, we're always going to dwell. Uh, a song by Prince Royce and Anuel, and he says, uh, it's Bubalu. I'm pretty sure this guy knows it. You might know it. Uh, where he's like, déjame entrar. Huh? How don't you like that song? You know what? Anyways, he says, déjame entrar como antes, cuando tú y yo... I'm on this, some shit, right? And basically he's saying, you know, let me in like before when we were lovers and how, you know, that relationship really does change. You know, when you break up with someone, the relationship is completely different. You know, when people say, oh, we can be friends. Like for me, it's like, you know, why would I want to be friends with you? Because now you're just going to completely change how you are around me, 100% 360. And it's like, man, yes, I would like you to be in my life still, but I'm still going to want the same things as when we were together because why would I why would I want less from you? Why, yeah. you know, it's like even though you're here it's still like damn, you're ripping away everything that we were. I don't know, man. Sad boys. It's it's hard, man, you know. Sad hours like it's so hard. For me, example like I tell everyone this, you break up with someone don't be their friends. You know, I know it's hard. You want them in their life, but it's not good to have an ex as a friend for a sole reason that two, three years down the line, you know, even if you love them, it would suck to see them with someone else. 
deep down. Even if you say, oh, it's not going to hurt, it will hurt, you know, because you think about all the good times you had and missed opportunities, like we're talking about, missed opportunities that you could have done better, and you start thinking about it. So for me, you know, anytime that happens, you know, I cut them off right away. I don't dwell on it, you know, delete everything, pictures, everything. It's a chance for you to improve on yourself, an opportunity. But it's tough. It really is. Yeah, bro. And those memories that you do have with the person, they're clouded anyways because you think, oh, man, you know what? We're good. I'm going to hit them up. We're going to be straight. But it's just a cycle, bro, that toxic relationship cycle where, you know, you're in the honeymoon stage, then shit, you know, you argue, you break up, and then you get back together, shit like that. At the end of the day, it's really not the best thing for you. And like I said, to completely move on, you just got to completely let go. A song that I think about is my boy Aragon. You know, he says, let it go. And at the time when I first discovered that song, I was going through like a similar situation. And I just really, you know, I sat down one day and I was like, damn, this dude's speaking facts. You just got to let it go. Who be speaking facts, though? My favorite artist out there, Bad Bunny. You know, he's like the Drake of Latin, like the community. Like his songs, you listen to the lyrics. It's sad. But, like, the beat makes it so uplifting that you want to dance to it. One of my favorite songs is called La Cacion. He talks about basically, you know, when the song comes on, he remembers, you know, the sex he had. All the good times, you know, kissing, making out, whatever it is, you know, sex. Remembers all that good times. But then, near the end, you know, it's a song with J Balvin, too. Towards the end, you know, he talks about whatever we had, though, is dead. And I think that speaks a lot is that sometimes, you know, people... In a relationship, man, they just get hurt too much to where it's like, yeah, you know, I wish I could have something with you, but what you did was fucked up, and now what we had is dead, and I'm on to better things. And so if y'all, you know, my bad, but if you got tickets to Bad Bunny concert, you got some junk clouds that you want to give away, send them my way because that's, that's my guy right there, you know. I would say I know him personally, but, you know, one day, one day for sure. About the ultimate sad boy song, Amor Folda. That's some sad stuff, you know. Sad boy, sad boy radio. All right, bro, but moving forward, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. We're going to go ahead and close out the yeah, show. Of course. So every week I ask the new guest to bring a special item. So I don't know if you brought yours, but you can go ahead and talk about it. I'll plug it in at the end. I got you. I got you. So <clears throat> I feel like my item is split into two parts um so obviously you know this was a tattoo you know i got a f- couple of months back um it's uh just basically has my abuelo and abuelas you know date uh they passed away you know sadly last year um probably like three four months apart um and then i got a necklace um of them together or no i got a necklace of my abuelo you know with his late wife um and that's really the only picture I have of him. Um, and so, you know, I keep that in my car as kind of like a remembrance of him. This was kind of a missed opportunity. You know, he had suffered from, you know, a lot of illnesses and stuff like that. When COVID hit, you know, he got hit with that too and stuff. And I wanted to be there for him. He was always in Massachusetts and I was still doing school. And at that time, due to COVID, they wouldn't let anyone, you know, visit. And you can't even be in the room, you know. And even if you wanted to like FaceTime him, he was to a point where he was so exhausted. And so that whole week, you know, I was trying to call him or, you know, try to see up day on him. And even, you know, his close family couldn't, you know. And so I feel like that was a missed opportunity that if I had more money in my pocket or, you know, if I wasn't in school, I could have visited him. Um, And so I kind of see those as as cherishable items, especially this tattoo. I got remembrance from him. Uh, I feel like, you know, he's watching over me and uh, I keep a reminder every day that, you know, every day is a brand new day. He used to be a pastor. And so he was a man of God. And um I think, you know, it's just a remembrance not to miss the opportunities on talking to your family members. Take that little time because you never know when they can go, you know. And it's sad, but at the end of the day, you know, everyone passes away. And so it's good, you know, your family's always there for you in the end. You can lose girlfriends or anything like that, but they're always there for you. So Definitely cherish those around you. Uh, I think maybe that's why me and this guy get along so well. We definitely uh, have our experience with that lately, so... 
I really appreciate you sharing that story, bro. Of course, man. We definitely got a lot more coming. So, hey, I'm telling you, this is my new second. So you'll see his ass around more. Tune in. You know, we got more topics to talk about. I feel like I got words of wisdom, you know. So definitely tune in to this guy's channel. It's a great channel. A lot of guests come through with a lot of opinions, a lot of great um, just information to talk about. So anytime you're going through a rough time, you got some free time, tune in to Sad Boy Radio. That's it, really. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead and follow this guy. I'll drop Please. his at in the description. Please do. Thank you, guys. Sad Boy Radio. Peace out. This is Sad Boy Radio.